theme songs are so important in the world of wrestling, and we have found someone who recorded one of the most iconic wrestling theme songs in the WWE. We have Just Joe here. He recorded the Big Show theme song. How are you doing, Joe? I'm excellent. It, I'm in upstate New York, and it's 70 degrees, and the sun is out, so today is a good day up here. Perfect. So you are the voice behind one of the most iconic WWE theme songs. Were you a wrestling fan growing up? Oh, absolutely. And and I'm I'm old enough, like I'm 47. So when wrestling became to the forefront, I remember before I started watching wrestling before WrestleMania. It was like right when I first started watching, I was going back and forth between watching WWF at that time and also on on what was TBS. And they had, you know, the, you know, what would become the WCW. So I was, I was in the back and forth, all that. And then all of a sudden it exploded through my eyes. I, I saw the match, not in person, but I remember watching the match between Hulk Hogan and the Iron Sheik, which basically started it. And after that, you know, I was, I was hooked. I was hooked as a kid. Now, how did this opportunity to write this theme song come about? Did you originally write the song and it got picked up later or did someone reach out to you specifically to write it? It's it's a very interesting story because um, we were, my band Brand New Sin was out on the road. Uh, we had toured with Motorhead a few times and this was the second time we're out on the road with Motorhead and we were playing at the Hampton Beach Casino in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. And all day long, you know, the crew members and the guys in the band are like, hey, you know, Triple H and Stephanie are going to come out because Motorhead and, and Triple H had such a, you know, a close relationship and, and he, they had done the theme songs together. So I'm like, yeah, sure, he's going to come and sure, they're going to watch us. But <laughs> long story short, we were playing that night in the middle of the set. I'm kind of looking down and, and the Hampton Beach Casino probably holds about 2000 people and it was near capacity. So in the middle of one of the songs, I see somebody, I see a couple come down in between the barricade and the the stage and they got their hair down and they're just banging like that. And I'm like, hell yeah. And I look up and goes up and it's Triple H and Stephanie. And they're just like, you know, <laughs> fist bumping me. I'm like, whoa, I mean, this is crazy, you know? So like um, nobody else in the band really was out into wrestling except for me and my one guitar player so i go over to my one guitar player in the middle of one of the songs i'm like dude you see who's watching us and he goes yeah so we get done with the set i come down off the ramp i go into the dressing room i'm sitting in the dressing room and i hear a knock on the dressing room i open it up and, and triple h and stephanie like hey we, we'd love to come in and hang out you know like we want to talk to you guys so we hung out for most of the night we chatted a lot about music and stephanie and triple h were both like we really think that you guys have that sound like we got to get you involved in in the wwe and this isn't like lip service no offense to like some other wrestlers that would come out and see us you know this is the this is the prince and princess you know they're going to take over the company so we knew that they were gonna, they were going to follow through on that so they took some merchandise and a bunch of cds and they're like we will be in touch you know we'll be in touch with your manager and lo and behold a couple of weeks later um the wd wwe got a hold of us and uh and said listen we're going to sign a little thing that we're going to work together at some point we just don't know on what at time and this is like may of 2005. so we did that and then a few months later we're on tour again in the uh, in the fall in september and we finally get a call from the wwe and they're like we finally have the project for you we want you to re-record the big show's theme song because that the original theme song that he had was very blues oriented mm -hmm. and so they're like take that and in in you know, like inject what you guys do and in a few weeks we had like a couple of days off between a show in like springfield massachusetts and toledo ohio so they're like we'll come spend two days at the wwe headquarters and we'll we'll hash this out um so that was how like it came, that was how it came about which was literally triple h and stephanie and uh they were became really good friends of ours and i i think i became a huge triple h i was always a big triple h fan but how could you not become one when he he they were the catalyst for it all right so how long did it take you to craft this remake of crank it up um, we would sit in hotel rooms cause we weren't really ever home that much at that time in our career or really on the road. So it was like sitting in hotel rooms, kind of listening to it. And, and, um, we had an idea of what we were going to do with it, but we had no way of recording it and sending it at that time. We didn't, you know, there was no smartphones or, you know, the, you know, 
Facebook, I think MySpace was still in its infancy and all that stuff. So there's no way of really getting showing the WWE what we were doing. They were just putting in their trust that we were going to come in and, you know, do our thing. But they had blocked out 10 hours of studio time, which wow. I mean, everything was I mean, we went to we went to WWE headquarters and everything is like there and like in, it, it, to watch that operation is a whole other whole other thing and to see behind the scenes, not only at the headquarters, but like backstage, it's it's it was such a fun experience once so. once you had the the final you know song and it was ready to go did you get to sit with big show to listen to it or did you get to meet him what was that like yeah well we we recorded the song and this was like i said in the fall of 2005 uh and then we were just immediately out back out on the road and then um i believe at that time then he got he got hurt shortly after that and they weren't they were getting ready to kind of rebrand his character um so a few weeks later about a month later wwe we had another day off on that same tour and they're like why don't you come meet us in indianapolis and come to raw meet vince and big show and just spend the day you know hanging out and that was the day that we like got to go in and then they you know big show came in and we hung out with them for the day and he was in the middle of a lot of things, but he, we, they had not given us the song yet. We had not heard it. And he's like, I haven't heard it yet. And I heard that you guys are great. So at that moment, we hadn't heard much. Uh, and then he had so much to do that Triple H at that time was not wrestling. He was doing some other stuff. And he took us around and gave us the, like the, the grand tour of the entire day. So, but when we finally got to meet Big Show, one, he is, dude, he's so like he's so big <laughs> i don't think people realize like when you see it on tv there's no like there's no like um way of like a, a point of reference you can kind of tell but, but all these wrestlers are large but when you meet the guy and my drummer was uh six two six three and he didn't even come up to his shoulder and all of us i'm like five ten i mean big show shook our hand and it literally felt like a little baby like shaking this large hand it was the sheer and he was much larger than I think he was 500 pounds at the time but mm -hmm. man he was just like I'm like how do you how do you do things in life being this large you know it was it was it's obnoxious to see someone that large it's crazy so when did you hear the final version of the song I think it was over the winter we had some time off and and we finally got an email and we got to hear the song and it had all the bells and whistles on it because the day we recorded it was such a whirlwind because they were not only recording us, but they were getting ready for Raw that night. We recorded on a Monday. So they were doing, putting all the final touches on all the vignettes and all this other stuff in the studio. So there was like, there was a lot of chaos going on. So uh, it was tough to kind of see where they were gonna take the song. Uh, and Jim, um, I mean, who did all the theme songs from what, 1984, all the way up until a few years ago. I mean, that guy just was a genius behind all. So we finally heard the song and we're all like, wow, I'm like, this sounds so cool. And then they signed, they said to us, they're like, big show's coming back. And that was when they decided they were going to, they bought ECW and they were going to put big show as one of the main guys in ecw so they're like okay it's gonna be a few more months but we're gonna use it and we're gonna use it for the first time i think it was i want to say it was may or june of 2006 when they had that ecw pay-per-view mm -hmm. and we were actually in new york city recording a record and we got to uh, they gave us a code to watch the pay-per-view and that was when they debuted that theme song so from 2006 all the way up until now he's you know now he's off into acw or, or aew so he doesn't use a theme song but i mean everybody knows that theme song now it's it's crazy you know yeah that theme song is iconic and it's one of my favorites if you could write a song for anyone right now wrestling do you have someone in mind who you would like want to write for oh, man well i mean he just retired but i mean my favorite all-time wrestler of all time was undertaker mm. always but i mean as for newer people I don't know. There's, it, I, I kind of lost touch with a lot of the newer things because so much is fractured in the past few years, yeah. you know. And um, uh, there's, there's so much. I mean, there's NXT and there's a. I would love to like find some young guy 
you know, yeah. let's let, let's find some unknown and let, let's shape something for him, you know, and give him something that like, I mean, cause that's the best thing about a theme song. Like when you heard the broken glass, you knew here comes, here comes stone cold, or you hear my voice, you knew big show was coming out, you know, there, you know, or the rock, like there was those certain things that you heard that and it, that erupted before anything happened. So I would love to do that for some new guy that's up and coming. And there's so many amazing young wrestlers that I'm seeing on NXT. So was Big Show the only WWE superstar that you've written a theme song for? Had you ever written a wrestling theme song before his? No, no, we never, we had never done that. So, you know, I mean, cause you know, like, how, how do you even do that? You know, like, how do you even get that opportunity? Like everyone's like, how did you get that opportunity? I'm like, we, we had we literally from Triple H and everybody. And now, I've, now that he's moved over to AEW and everyone's like, well, why don't you just like write him a new theme song and reach, you know, call people. I'm like, well, do you think just because I did one thing, I can make a phone call? I'm like, yeah, that's, <laughs> hey, it's me. You know, like we've, we haven't kept in touch or anything like that, but I'm sure that it's in the, in the background because the crazy thing is, and this is like a little sidebar is about a year ago during the middle of lockdown and all that stuff. My daughter was like watching Netflix one day and she stumbled on the show and she was watching big shows, um, oh TV show. Uh -huh. And I kept hearing the song and I go, honey, I go, you want to know something? She goes, what? My daughter's seven. I'm like, that's daddy singing the song. And she's like, what? You know him? <laughs> like she had like an aha moment because we never had that conversation because I mm -hmm. think still now that she's kind of understanding what daddy does for a living and everything. But like, and now she like, and then she tells people at school and they think she's, <laughs> And I'm like, well, here's a picture of daddy with it. I'm like, we can prove this. I could come in someday. But <laughs> she, she was like, oh. and then it became her favorite TV show. So, but yeah, Aww. we never, never had written anything um, up to that point, you know? So honestly, I don't know if I want to, because we just, we did that one. Like, what are we going to do after that? How do you top it? Right. <laughs> How do we top that? Exactly. It's such such a big song, such a memorable voice that you have. Now, do you get invited to karaoke nights? Because <laughs> I'm sure your friends would just not let you even go up on stage. Oh, it well, karaoke and me are always interesting because no matter where I go, especially in this town, because I'm well known in my hometown. And, and, you know, so anytime, sometimes I go to karaoke and I just want to hang out and listen to other people, but obviously it comes like, Hey man, when you get up and sing a, a song, or even when I go see a band, they're like, you want to come up and sing a song? I mean, I can't complain about it. It's, it's who I am, but you know, but it is funny, but I've been hired just to go to weddings to sing. Well, yeah, I get to do that at some, as people go like, Hey, we're introducing the bride and the groom. And I get up and I'll literally get paid to just sing that part and sing the big show oh theme song in person. It's been, it's, it's funny. And I was like, did you really do that? I'm like, yeah, because that's the thing. Like millions and millions and millions of people hear my voice all the time and have over the years. They don't even know who the hell I am. I could see be sitting next to them. I've sit next to them at WWE events. And I go, that's me. And they're like, get out of here. And then I have to actually do it. And they're like, oh my God, it is you. Cause I'm a, I'm a fate. I'm a, just a voice, not a face, you know? Right. So you have ventured into Twitch. You are a Twitch streamer. How did you yeah. get into using this platform? COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, up till then I've been, I've been a professional musician, musician for 20, a um, little over 20 years. Uh, and it's been my full-time job. And up until right before COVID happened, I was playing 275 to about 325 gigs a year up and around New York State and the Northeast, um, mainly with my piano and sometimes with my band. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, I was aware of what Twitch was because I was part of the morning show here in Syracuse and we started using uh, Twitch on there. And I was like, wow, I could probably if I went over here, maybe I won't have to work as much because now that my daughter's getting older and I'm a single dad, it's just like. I'm trying to find time and not run out the door, even though I'm not a touring musician, I'm still a working musician. And that's, that's a, that's not an easy life. And it takes a lot of time away from personal things. So I wanted to make the leap to Twitch, but how do you do that when you're already you got a schedule that's you doing all that, but then all of a sudden, uh, you know, COVID and lockdowns hit and then I have no gigs. So I just was like, all right, well, this is, I'm going to jump into the world of Twitch. And I had a couple of step ups, you know, to get me a little bit further along. And there was a captive audience. I have a huge uh, social media following. So I'm just like, hey, everyone come over to Twitch. And in one short year time, I've, you know, 
that's how I make my living now. Like I sit here in this studio mainly, you know, and the, the live gigs that are coming back are like little things that I do on the side mm -hmm. and Twitch is my thing. So it's such, it's such a crazy platform. That could be a whole other conversation for another day is what has happened in that, in that time in the past year. And do you have a lot of great covers on Twitch, on YouTube, and you also post videos on Facebook. One yeah. of your favorite, um, well, one of my favorite covers that you have is Take On Me. Like, oh, yeah. so perfect. What has one of your favorite covers been that you have? That was one of them. And for years, I had always played it, but I'd always tried to play it like the original. Mm -hmm. And I think one day it just kind of like, Meh, I go, I'm going to slow it down. And I was at some just restaurant here in Syracuse, nothing elaborate. And I kind of did the version that you heard and that I recorded. And I did that. And I was like, and the whole place, like normally at restaurants, everyone's like, yeah, there's a little clap or a little pitter patter after every song. Or sometimes there's nothing. After that, there was like a resounding, I'm like, wow, I'm on to something here. You know? So I'm like, what, what am I, what am I doing? This is, this is pretty cool. You know? So that is definitely one of my, um, my favorite covers um that i've done it's it resonated but there's i mean i do i record five to six covers a week and put up on on facebook wow. and then once in a while I'll put them up onto to youtube so over the course of like the past five eight, six years i've probably recorded i don't know seven or eight hundred different videos <laughs> and covers i play four thousand songs as of right now i do four thousand songs at the drop of a hat that's so impressive. It's it's it's, it's 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 ridiculous, is what it is. It's I don't know how my brain does it, but it does. So. You mentioned your band along with your brand band, Brand New Sin. You've had the opportunity to be on ESPN, MTV. You yep. even were in School of Rock. Can you tell us a little bit about these experiences? Oh man, well, let's start with ESPN. That was like when our first our first Brandison record came out was in 2002, and a guy we were playing in New York City. I can't remember exactly what club it was, or if we were playing at one of the small theaters there, opening from somebody. And some of the people from ESPN, the ESPN music director, had come out uh, and saw us afterwards, and it was one of those things like, "Hey, I'm gonna take your music back. I think we're gonna use it in the Stanley Cup Finals." And they did, they licensed a couple of songs. And then that guy was the music director over at ESPN. And then he just started licensing our songs for, you know, uh, you know, football games and, you know, just those little things. Like you're cut into a commercial and you hear a little bit of a riff or you hear some singer stuff like that. So they did that. But the biggest one is that they did, I was during the Stanley Cup finals. They used a like two and a half minute clip wow. of one of our songs during like a, you know, a highlight of what was going on during the Stanley Cup. Uh, MTV the main thing that happened over there other than our videos being played on like headbangers ball was that the guys in jackass bam Majera, and those guys um became fans of the band and then they started using our music on viva la bam and home records and stuff like that so once again it was just these things as we started to get more exposure and you know some of the people that were higher up in media started doing all that you know uh and then wait so espn mtv what was the last School one? School of Rock. School of Rock. That was a roundabout thing too, because the guy that owned our very first record label was it, our first record label was a very small independent record label out of uh, New Jersey, and his really good friend was uh, extras casting director for Paramount, mm. and called him and said, "Hey, I'm looking for guys that look like they're in bands for this new Jack Black movie that's shooting in New Jersey and in Staten Island over the next six months." you know, do you have any guys in on your label that would, you know, look the part? We just need somebody, we need people to be in the background. We go, we finally get the call. We go down to Parsippany, New Jersey to, to go to casting one day. We had played a show in Ithaca, New York, which is just south of Syracuse. We didn't sleep. We just drove there. We're smelling, probably drunk. You know, we walk into casting at six in the morning. And all these people are there trying to look like rock stars and we just rolled in from a show. So we go into the casting room and they're like, who, who are you guys? Are you actors? <laughs> we're like, no, we're just a band. They're like, all right, tell everyone else to go home. We found the band that we need for this scene. So then we spent, you know, a week on set there for a couple of scenes. I mean, we're in such small parts. I literally have to be like, there it is. 
<laughs> there it is. But if you look up Brand New Sin School of Rock on uh, YouTube, there will be videos of that fan videos are posted up and you they have the parts of where you can kind of see us in the background. But what had happened while we were on this set the first time, we were only supposed to be there for that one scene or that those couple of scenes. They uh, they wanted us for the final scene to be continuity throughout the movie. So we were gone on the road two months later in like San Antonio, Texas, and we get a call from a manager. They're like, you got to come back to New York City. We're like, we're in the middle of Texas. They're like, you got to be here in two days. We're like, all right, we got to go. And, you know, back to New York City we went for that. And it was during that trip that Jack Black had, you know, heard our band finally, and he came up to us and said, hey, I want to use one of your songs somewhere in the movie. And you can barely hear it, but he got it in the movie, which means it gets us paid. And, and that movie's become such a successful movie that, I, you know, I make a couple hundred bucks every year because of that movie. And the coolest thing about that movie was we got, became friends with all those kids who are now like 30 years old, which Aww, makes you yeah. feel old. Yeah. But they could only be on set for so long every day. Uh -huh. So they had to do schooling. And then we would sit there and jam with these kids because they were all legit musicians. So we would have jam sessions with these kids on the set. And that was, again, a whole other. I've, I've led an interesting life. Every time I talk about it, I'm like, man, I've done some pretty cool things along the way. And that definitely being one of them. So. And bringing up your your interesting life that you have, you do so much. You even do podcasting. Yes. Um, you interview musicians and you talk about the business. What got you into podcasting? Uh, I like talking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, honestly, I've been doing, I was doing the morning show, uh, K-Rock here in Syracuse, New York, and I started becoming a regular on the morning show a couple times a week. And the guy that hosts the morning show came to me. He's like, man, you really should just do a podcast because you have all these amazing stories and you have all these amazing uh, friends and people in the business. And you like talking about your, 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 your stories in the music industry. Plus, like my passion outside of music is like fitness. I love, you know, because a few years ago, like go back four years ago, I weighed 280 pounds. I was an athlete growing up and then I got into the rock and roll lifestyle and I got put on all this weight and then I got, you know, just not healthy, you know, mentally and physically. So then I got myself healthy again on every level. So that's got incorporated in a podcast and then. I'm also into like conspiracy theories and all these things. So my podcast is really music based, but it's if I can find interesting people to talk to, I will get the stories to come out of them. But now I'm getting ready to launch another podcast that is centric just on wellness, because that has been such a huge resonator amongst my fan and the people on social media about my fitness journey and my uh, mental health journey and the battles of anxiety and panic disorder that I've had. And and we're making a centric one just for that, that I'm going to be launching in the next few months. So I love I mean, you guys obviously love podcast. It's fun, right? Yeah, it is fun to just chat with people and get stories from them. So it's the Just Joe podcast is the one that I have now. You can find that on all the all the, the mediums that you get all that. And the new one, as I've already I got the dot com and everything, it's going to be called the rock and podcast like B O D bod. Because back in the 80s, like, man, he's got a rock and bod or she's got a rock and bod. So came up with it. So that's going to be the rock and podcast. But I'm putting that in an incubator right now and letting that kind of get it, get its feet for a little bit. You're letting it marinate, which is always, yes. great. always great. Um, Joe, now Lo and I have a um, love for your theme song, of course, and yeah from the beginning of mine and Lowe's friendship, like she has known that I just go around the house <laughs> singing this song because it's just such a big part of my childhood. And like, I'll sometimes just voice her, me singing just that little intro, but we are now at the point of the podcast where we're going to have our well off. Well, so we're going to see who can sing it better. Or if you can give us some tips, you know, training, on right. how to improve it. So would you be so kind as to give yes. us an example of Absolutely, what it should because sound like? There was, we had recorded the entire song uh, and, and had that in the bag, you know, like the whole song was done. And then Jim is like, well, now we got to do the most important part of the theme song. So he's like, 
all the band members out, you guys go to catering or go wherever me and Joe are going to work together and work on this opening thing. I'm like, well, it's, it's simple. I just go, you know, uh, you know, do that. But I was doing it. It's very hard. Cause I think you can find the original theme song still somewhere on there. And that old one had a very bluesy kind of, mm-hmm. it was a very different style. So I kept trying to kind of mimic that a little bit. And then he's like, no, he goes, we're trying to get away from that. There's something new, you know, introduce it. So then I was doing it I was doing it like really hard and like, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm attacking this. And then it, we're literally, tr- I must have sang that well, like 50 times in like an <laughs> hour to get that to where it was. And finally, he's like, man, just, just let it, just let it come out. Don't think about it and just say it you know and just kind of take a breath in and just go ah like that and and then all of a sudden i did that and he goes that's it and i go but it doesn't seem like i did much with it and he's like dude but you did he goes you're not thinking about it and it was just a simple you know and that was when i just finally because i would try to for a while i was trying to go well i was trying to do that or well like that and then i was finally just like well just like that and he's like that's it i'm like i could have done that an hour ago it was 50 <laughs> takes but yeah that was it's just simple take that big breath and just go well that's it <laughs> the way i'm intimidated right now <laughs> oh it's not intimidating i mean i was intimidated trust me that was that was one of the most in a, in a studio setting that was one of the most uh stressful moments ever <laughs> so i'm like ha huh? you know and and they're all of the brass from the from wwe were on the other side of the glass because they were all coming in you know vince wasn't there that day but everybody else was and they're all looking at me i'm like and i'm honestly i'm gonna be honest i was really hung over that day from the show the night before <laughs> so all of us were so when you hear that theme song now know that i felt like complete shit that day i'm like why did i do this i just come into the <laughs> biggest song in my career because i couldn't like I went to bed at like five in the morning, was at the studio at eight. That was a bag of shit that day, but it made it happen <laughs> somehow. So, but yeah, it's just, well, and you got to get a little, you know, got to hit that diaphragm, you know? So is it up to She's you guys ready. now to, am I judging who's <laughs> going to have the better well You're, here? I think we should do it together, Iridian. I think we should, no, because what if one is longer than the other? <laughs> I feel like we, you know what, Lo, I'm going to let you go first. I'm going to be. Oh, gosh. Uh (laughs) Go ahead. I can't listen to what you do. Big breath. Close the eyes. Just let it happen. Well. That was great. That was good. That was good. All right. Oh, Lord Jesus. Well. Ooh, see that one? That one you follow more. Now go back to Lo. Now do it. Just relax a little bit more this time. Don't try to do any like Christine Aguilera <laughs> twirls. Just whirl, just straight ahead like a, a car going down, like a train going down the track. Whirl, just like that. Okay. Well. There you go. That was better. That was way better. All right, now go back. Now You're... you won up. You're. Oh my God, I got a man. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well. Simple. Because that's wow. all it is. Because once somebody hears that, they're like, there it is. You know, I'm breathing so heavy right now, guys. <laughs> uh-uh. On a Saturday morning, I, I believe that you were stressed out recording this. Joe. Yes, definitely. No, I, I was you know, slowly <laughs> sweating out, you know, booze from the night before. So, you know, crazy. This has been such a great experience having you on, Joe. Thank you for joining us. Can you Thank let you us know me. where the people can find you? Uh, you can find if you just put in if you Google search just Joe, I come right up. It's my website, and then that usually that'll leave you down the rabbit hole to the to uh, to everything else. You know, just Joe Syracuse on Twitch. Uh, just Joe Syracuse. If you put just Joe Syracuse in the in the in the Google search, it'll also bring up my Instagrams, uh, my Twitter handle. I don't. I'm not as active on Twitter. I'm really more active on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and then the YouTube, you'll find everything really there. But if you go to that justjoe.com, which is the easiest dot com ever, and that will just kind of spur you out to everything else that I do out there. I got a really good website that kind of brings that all together so that you don't have to remember what is what is this handle here and handle there. 
everything else. So yeah, and I got content left and right. And I have high functioning anxiety. So there's always something coming out of me at some point because I just can't sit still. Well, thank you, Joe, so much for joining us. Thank and you. we will be practicing our wells. Yes, yes and thank you practice for and, and we'll, we'll, we'll reconvene at some point and we'll, and we'll see how your progress is being. Oh, made. no, there's going to be an update. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you for, for the ladies time out of your day to listen of to course. our wells because yes. I know it must have not been a great time for you, but we appreciate your coaching. Oh, anytime, anytime. You ladies have a great afternoon. I can't wait to share this to, to everybody as well, so. Thank you. All right. Thanks, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.